Hey Roamers, I'm Jamie. I'm Linda. And this is Roaming with Rosie. Today we're at Raptor Ranch, just 29 miles south of the entrance to the Grand Canyon. Meet Troy Morris. Raptor Ranch grew out of his childhood fascination of birds, specifically birds of prey, known as raptors. Right. Oh, there he is. See him? No. See, look. Look at my finger. So, as long as I can remember, I've been interested in birds. It's, um, it's something to see to take a bird that you trained or raised and let it go and realize that it's gone thousands of feet up in the air and you can't see it, but he's still watching you and he's still counting on you to do your part. So it's, uh, it's just something that's kind of magical. I came up with the, uh, the idea in 04, somewhere um, where there would be in a, you know, a, a place near a state or national park that would get people that were at least mildly interested in uh, nature. And then, um, you know, kind of showcase my birds as a special part of that venue. And then of course, as I started thinking about it, I thought, well, if I'm going to go and do something like this. I want to be at the best place possible. So I basically uh, researched traffic patterns to state and national parks and um, it put my finger on a map right here. Um, I'd never been here before. I said, I want to be right here at this junction or after this junction towards the Grand Canyon and um, drove up here and uh, started looking for property. Childhood. I came here when I was like 12 or 13. Um, and came through here when we were going to the Grand Canyon. When we were here two years ago, they had talked about taking out Bedrock City, but because so many people come and they want to see it, and a lot of them say my age or somewhere in that age range, <laughs> they want to check it out because it reminds them of their childhood. Now they're keeping Bedrock City, they're basically refurbishing it all, and as you can see Pebbles and Bam Bam are in here. Initially they were outside. These two are actually the only characters that are made out of paper mache, so they wanted to put them inside here to, oh. to save them. Uh, the, uh, the Bedrock Park back here, um, it's uh, been here since 1972, we just celebrated our 50th anniversary here. And that is really popular with people. We've got the uh, ever popular 20 foot brontosaurus slide. Uh, we've also got the large snake that you uh, crawl in through the mouth and you come out through the tail.
raptors, birds of prey, what they're all about here, are descendants of dinosaurs. Correct. So we've just uh, let uh, Benny go. He's a three-year-old peregrine falcon uh, that we raised here. And he's been uh, all over this part of the county, east of Flagstaff, over the Grand Canyon, and then back in the same day. That was pretty a pretty common occurrence. And well, he's 850 feet up now. Wow. And how far away? Distance away? Uh, 1,300 feet. So not very far. He's right over here. Oh, he's right over our head. Here he comes. Most of his new feathers in now. So what's he screaming about? Uh, so he is screaming at me because I'm his parent. Um, when uh, baby birds will do that to their parents, they're just constantly screaming for food. And um, when they get old enough, the parents just drive them away because it drives them crazy <laughs> uh, with him. Uh, I've not driven him away, so he's still got some bad, uh, bad manners. Um, and when I was six, seven, eight, nine years old, I was always picking up birds that had fallen out of the nest in the spring and rehabilitating them and releasing them. I was eight or nine, eight or nine. There were some kids down the street, they had hawks and falcons, and whoa, I saw those and I was just immediately infatuated with them. And then I kind of put it all away while I uh, continued school and then later began my career. Later, I saw a bird of prey flying overhead and I, th I thought, man, I really want to revisit that. And uh, so I went out and um, took the test and got my falconry license and I've just loved every minute of it since then. It's just, it's something just really magical and not everyone appreciates it, uh, but the people that are really hooked by it uh, really get uh, hooked hard. Meet Ashley. After six years in the veterinary field, she seized on the chance to join the team at Raptor Ranch as a new falconer. Now, do you have to go to school to be a falcon? Fal how do you say that? Falconer? Yes. We have to take a test and be an apprentice. Okay. And you've already done that. Yeah, I took my test and I'm, I'm an apprentice right now, so it'll be a two-year apprenticeship. Oh, this is Troy. Wow. He's, he's um, so graciously taken me under his wing and taught oh. me everything I know. <laughs> So I'm just cutting up some chicken necks for the baby owl that we're going to practice flight demonstrations with. He is a baby from this year's eggs, so he's only about like six months old. So we cut small pieces so we can try to get more flights, more exercise for them instead right. of feeding everything all at once. And then I stick in my handy dandy pouch. So I'm going to try to get into the stuff. Like I said, sometimes he comes oh. out like a screaming banshee. Perfect. Oh, good job. That's so we're going to get him over baby. here and I'm going to weigh him. He's so ready he is. So they're six months old, Troy, I think. Wow. Is where they are. Let's see if I can get him over to the oh tail here. He's yeah. making a clicking noise. Yeah, so he's still a baby, so he's snapping his beak. Come on. Oh! Yeah, good job. Now, what is that a sign that he's snapping his feet? Um, basically, it's a warning sign. Oh. Okay, hang on. I gotta see how much you weigh. Stop fidgeting. One thousand eight hundred and ninety-five grams. So we're gonna give him to my glove. So this is our training session. Perfect. Let's see if he'll. And this is good for him. We've had a big tent here, and he's yeah. done great. So he's, it's really good for him. He'll be a really good owl to use for our flight programs. Yeah. We just got to get him used to it. Come on, baby. So we got to let him refocus. He's just it. Here we go. Yeah. Ah, oh, baby. Good job. I'm really, yeah. really proud of how far he is. Yeah, he is. Yeah. When I got pictures of him, he was 
He was, he's a week behind all the other two. They were from the same clutch. And he could fit in the palm of your hand. Aww. He is an Aplomato Falcon. He was born this year. So he's just a couple months old. He's just starting flight training. We weighed him today. He's a little too heavy, so he won't be flying today. Okay. So he's getting moved from my house over to an enclosure over here now. Aww. How many do you have at your house? He was the only one. Oh, okay. Yeah. So just you take them home in, like, circulation? Like yeah, yeah. Need... Every spring I get bait. Well, this is my you first babies. spring. So I got the baby owls, and I had a couple other, the other two baby aplomatos over there. They went home with me until they got too big, and same mm -hmm. with him. He's, he stayed with me the longest because we were trying to, because um, they imprint on people. Um, okay. Their imprints are a little more reliable when they're hunting with birds. So a lot of falconers like the imprints. And so um, what happens when you just put them up after they're growing, they kind of feel like they get abandoned. So we try to keep them longer with, with us oh, okay. and bring them in the house every evening and hang out with them just so they don't feel so abandoned and, and we get a good temperament out of them too. Uh, so. We spend a lot of time in the front of the house uh, getting the gift shop and restaurant diner ready. And now we're gradually moving to the back of the park. Um, there's still a lot of things that need to be refurbished. It was built in 72, so we've got uh, more homes for our birds of prey here uh, that we fly daily uh, in the park for our visitors. So, seven days a week, they do flight demonstrations, basically close to 11 a.m., 1 p.m., and um, 3, 3, 3 p.m. and 5 p.m. Yeah, so they, they do the demonstrations. They round up everybody who's out here at the ranch and let them know we're gonna do a demonstration. And then they gather everybody back at the stage that's right here. And even the people who are like, okay, we'll come over, but they were more interested in the Flintstones. It's been so fun to watch their reactions. Gonosaurus is in the, this season. They're quite happy back there. You like, if you come by, you want to make sure you feed the Gonosauruses. And the cool thing about it is, if you've been on a long drive to get to the Grand Canyon, you've been driving all day, or you take the kids to the Grand Canyon, maybe they're so young that doesn't mean much to them. Well, when you come back here to your camp space, or, or if you're staying down in Williams, you can stop here, let the kids run around and enjoy it. If you're staying here in the campground, you can go in and out of out of the park for free. Yeah. So we've seen a lot of people in the afternoon coming back from the canyon and just letting the kids run all through here. Right. The campground prices usually run about 50 to $75 per night. However, they're part of the Passport America program, which we love. We get almost all the savings that that we can count on during the year with passport america from may until august passport america is not good here but it's still a great deal even at 50 to 75 a night if you're a family of four and you would have paid eight dollars each to go into raptor ranch well you're not paying anything to go into raptor ranch with that campground rent your whole family of four you're saving eight times four, $32. Right. You're saving $32 a day. Plus you can just go in and out during the day for, for being a camper here. Right, and that includes, they have electric at the site, uh, 30 and 50 amp. They have water at the site. And then they also have a dump station 
where you can dump when you're getting ready to go. They now have full service septic sites. You don't even have to touch a sewer hose. Twice per week, their pumper wagon goes through the park and pumps the gray and black tanks of their guests. And you don't even have to be there. They give you a service tank sign you can just hang up and staff will take care of the rest. And the other thing that they also have is they also have, they can, you can fill up your propane here as well. And everything's really easy to, it's really accessible. So it's really kind of works out well. They have a lot of plans for the campground to come, but they've put a lot of work into it since we were here two years ago. So. Did you see light flying today with the wind? Is that more, yeah, more enjoyable? I think they like the wind because it makes them do more things easier. Yeah. It's tougher to fly into it, but they fly a little bit into it, then they use their momentum every time they stoop to pitch back up. And now they're in a spot where they've got enough momentum to actually beat their wings even upwind more or over to the side and then use the wind again to come down again. And then of course, when they do it on the back, side of the wind they turn after they stoop so that they pitch into the wind so it makes them go really high even though they're not going far out so near the end a lot they're right here and then he's coming straight down that's when he'll get the 70 miles an hour he's pushing, him, pushing him sideways this is stormy what is stormy and he's an awful not stormy do something apropos for the weather stormy was born in a storm he was Aww. how old is he he is two and a half months old. They they go from hatch to fully feathered um, in 60 days. Now is that an aplomato? Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm learning. You got, got it. Grasshopper. She just he got just a grasshopper. He just got a grasshopper. Oh my god. So this is Stormy. These are two-year-old aplomato found in their native southern Arizona, southern New Mexico, Texas, down into Mexico and South America. It's a Mexican falcon. Come here. <laughs> they strike fear into the hearts of starlings and small birds yeah, everywhere. You want to do it by yourself? Can't drop the glove, okay? Yeah, don't, don't Hold it up high. That's all we're going to do. You got it. Hold up high. Beautiful. Good job. Ooh. Oh, you're okay. He just got a piece. He won't hurt you. So he's going to call for me. Hi, Stormy. <laughs> Hey, Here, step yeah, this way so you can see it. There we go. All right. Hand. Other hand. Ronan? No, 
Nice spot. <laughs> uh, just looking forward to adding more and more as we go and continuing to make this a place where people can come and enjoy some time after they visited the wonderful Grand Canyon. Got a little uh, more room here to spread out, lots of room for the kids to run around. Don't have to worry about them falling off the cliff, uh, so that's a good thing. And um, lots of outdoors activities for them so uh, they can have a good time after they visit the canyon. Hey Roamers, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of Roaming with Rosie here at Bedrock City in Raptor Ranch. If you enjoyed this video, we'd really appreciate it if you'd share it with your friends and family. And if you're not yet a subscriber, make sure and hit that subscribe button. And ring that bell, that way you'll be notified each time we upload a new video. And make sure to leave a comment, that way you can be part of the conversation. Until next time. Yabba dabba doo!